Hello! Um, I will be reviewing a book because it says book review in the title. Um, I finished The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson, which is backwards, I apologise, um, last night, and I was like, I had no thoughts on this whatsoever, I can't make a review, no, 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 and then I just started writing on my phone, like, just sort of in a text document, um, or maybe, you know, I'll just sort of see what I thought, and then I wrote this huge long thing, so be prepared for a long review, because apparently I do have a lot to say, so, um, also, Right off the bat, warning, spoilers, not for this novel, but for the first novel in the series. This is the sequel, this is the second novel in the Mistborn trilogy. The first novel was called uh, The Final Empire, I just know it as Mistborn because that's what my book says, but it's also called The Final Empire. Um, I To tell you the premise of this novel, I have to spoil the first book. So do not watch this if you have not read the first book. It's an excellent novel and I would not want to be the one to ruin it for you because it's really great. Um, leave if you have not read it. Um, so this book, the premise, is they have just been at the end of the last book, killed the Lord Ruler, they defeated him, the gang succeeded in their goal and now suddenly, you know, this, this group of thieves, these group of con artists, are suddenly like having to take control of a country like they, they, they succeeded what happens after that and I really like that this book this book is what happens after the big guy is defeated you know the the big bad um, it's what happens after Sauron and the ring are destroyed it's what happens after Harry kills Voldemort it's the it's the rebuilding of the country after the the tyrant is gone you know and I really like that. It's really realistic. You know, you can see all throughout history, like our history, when a rebellion happens, it isn't, you know, rainbows and lollipops right off the bat. It's actually a lot of work and it usually gets a lot worse and usually a lot messier um, after, you know, a ruler is defeated. It's, I like that Sanderson didn't shy away from that. He actually steered into it because it's really interesting. Like, there is a definite shift in this book towards political affairs, but that's where the drama is, that's where the conflict is, that's where the intrigue and interest is, and it is really interesting. It does mean it has a very different tone and pacing, I think, compared to the first book. It, there's a lot of talking, you know, it's politics, it's governing, it, it's not terribly, you know, action-packed. Um, it is quite, um, I mean, it is still, there's quite a lot of action sequences in here, but there's a lot of talking, there's a lot of reflecting scenes, there's a lot of discussion, there's a lot of, you know, I, I, it makes it sound boring, but it's not. It's really interesting because they're trying to run a country and that's, or, or run a city anyway, and it's intense and scary. No one's ever done it before um, because the Lord Ruler was around for so long. Um, however, one thing that I, I didn't like is that it made a lot of the action scenes seem really contrived, particularly at the beginning, like the first half of the novel. Not all of them, but a lot of them felt just sort of crammed in there because oh my god there must be action you know what I mean it didn't they didn't really action action and by action I mean like sort of fighting scenes or whatever they're exciting to me when they have a purpose when they're telling me something about a character or they're forwarding the plot or they're you know whatever whatever um that's when they're exciting and there was a, quite a few action sequences in here that didn't really do that at all it was just oh my god action like that wasn't as exciting to me as, you know, the politic talks. I was <laughs> like, let's go back to the, you know, discussion over laws. Um, I found it more exciting. And he does write them very well, um, those politic scenes. Um, you care about them very much because of the characters. And I did feel there was a shift, there was a more focus on characters in this novel in than the first one. I mean, the first one really only had Vin and Kelsey. They were the two characters in that novel that had, you know, POVs, they were the, they were it, you know. Whereas with this one, there's a lot more characters that have POVs, both new characters that are introduced in this novel, but also old characters that we, you know, we know from Mistborn that now are getting, you know, a point of view and I get to see inside their head, I get to see the world through their eyes. And I think Brad Sanderson is very good at showing the world through someone's eyes, you know, you really get to see who they are and you learn a bit more about the world itself when you see it through, you know, a different perspective. Um, 
I will say though that some of the character development for Vin, especially when she begins to question her femininity um, and like her role as like a woman, it, while I like the idea and I don't think it was t awful, it just, the execution fell a bit flat for me and to be perfectly honest, it felt like it was written by a man, and it was. Um, it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't awful, it just, it, it felt like it was written by a man. It was a man questioning femininity rather than a woman questioning femininity, and as a woman who has questioned her femininity, you know, varying levels of it, um, it didn't, it, it felt very stereotypical and like someone was sort of trying to write about it but not quite pulling it off. Um, like I said, it wasn't awful. Um, and I did feel it was a little bit slow in the beginning, like very, very slow. Um, I felt like Sanderson did a very good job of very efficiently setting up where the characters are and where the story is right at the very beginning. Like we jump a year and we now know where they are. But, oh my God, my mum's come home. Okay, hold on one sec. <laughs> All right, I just had to shut my door so she didn't talk to me. Um, that sounded bad. But anyway, she, he sets up where the characters are very, very well, but then he sort of doesn't do anything with it for a very long time. It's, it's, it was really up to page like 100, 150, where I was like, oh, okay, the story has happened. Like a plot has arisen. Thank you for coming. Like it, it was just very strange because 150 pages into Mistborn, like the plot was well and truly begun like I was engaged it was it was happening but here it felt quite a while to sort of ramp up into anything um but it was still incredibly enjoyable I really loved it it was it gave me the feeling and I've never had this with a book before it gave me the feeling of binge watching a tv show you know that feeling when you're you know, you're six episodes in and you're just you're just wanting more and more. It's like eating a bag of crisps, you know, you're just sort of shoveling it in. Um, it was like that and I've never had that with a book before. You know, reading takes a bit of effort. You have to actually read and you have to imagine. But with this, it was so easy to read and so engaging that I just flew through it. I could read for hours and hours and I usually don't with this. It was incredibly fun. And... There's, a, there's lots of different plots all happening at once and yet you can follow along just fine and they're all, they all sort of overlap and affect each other and it's all very interesting and it doesn't want to make you put the book down which is pretty impressive considering it's, you know, a long ass fantasy novel. So, um, one subplot that I really did enjoy was sort of this um, mystery archaeology type story with Sazed. Um, part of it was that I just really like the character of Sazed, um, or Sazed, I don't know. I like Sazed, it's like Dazed, but with this S. Anyway, it was a bit sort of Lost-esque in the sense that it sort of, the answers, Lost is in the TV show, it sort of gave, the answers sort of gave more questions rather than answering stuff. Um, but it was really, really enjoyable and it didn't feel shoehorned in because what he was studying, he was studying the past, he was studying the Lord Ruler's past and history and how he became the Lord Ruler and sort of what happened back then a thousand years ago, what the heck? And so he was sort of collecting all of these documents and these conflicting, you know, um, scripts on what happened and, and, and what people think happened and it was, it was really fascinating and it was definitely a subplot, it just sort of, but it ran through the whole book and it, it was really crucial. I mean, things that were happening a thousand years ago are starting to happen again now and so it was really important and it wasn't um I think it demonstrates the variety of stories that you can get in this book like there's a variety of subplots in here and I really I think they meshed really really well um and I enjoy yeah I enjoy Sazed a lot and he also gets a new terrace there's a new terrace person um introduced in this novel and I really really liked her as well and yeah she's a female oh my god it's another female character <gasps> she's only a minor character but still <gasps> victory <laughs> um because you know it was really only Vin for the first book um one thing I will say is that while there is a lot of subplots going on, I feel like this one was done a little bit messier than the first one. I mean, the first book had a lot of subplots as well, but I feel like they f they flowed better. I think with this one, sort of, it's a bit less structured well. I feel like there's lots of characters sort of 
moving around while not doing much. It's sort of like, well, they can't be here while this happens, but they have to be here while this happens, and this have to be here. So it's sort of like goes like this without much actually happening. That happened for a little bit there. I think he just sort of, he knew where he wanted to go, but he wasn't sure quite how to get there. But it it was it, it ended up all right in the end. Um, It was just a bit, it's sort of, because of the multiple character perspectives, and he tends to jump from perspective to perspective within the chapter, that where he'll sort of jump from subplot to subplot from, POV to POV within the chapter and it's a bit jarring. He didn't used to do that in Mistborn. He he would sort of stay with a character and stay with a particular plot for most if not all of the chapter whereas with this one he sort of jumped around a bit and I found it a bit jarring. It didn't flow as well which I mean it was still very very nice but I, I did find it a bit uh, like hopping around. I didn't enjoy it as much. Um, once again, the ending is very, very, very good. I read it last night and I feel like it's a bit more tense than the first book. The first book was kind of more action-y and as much as I didn't know what was going to happen, I was sort of, it, it was like fighting and whatever. Whereas this one, it was more just like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what's going to happen. And it, it was suspenseful. My heart was sort of, <gasps> um, it was very, very good. And I feel like it was a bit more open-ended it, not just the ending, but the whole book, really, which makes sense. I think Miss Bourne was a little bit more, like, closed off and, like, one whole story. Um, and that makes sense. I think that, you know, he didn't know if he was going to get to write the full trilogy when he wrote Miss Bourne. So having it more, sort of, closed off makes sense. Whereas with this one, he knew he was going to get the third book. Um, it still feels like you know, a really good book and it's really a satisfying ending. It closes off the book well. It's just very open-ended compared to the first book, um, which makes me really want to read the second book. Ah, it's, I still have no idea where this trilogy is going and that's exciting. Um, the, I think Brandison, Sanderson, Brandison, um, he, he has a fantastic, he, he's fantastic at the balance um, between giving you enough to satisfy you in the book itself, but not giving you too much that you you still want to read the next one and see where the story goes. So that is my review. Um, I am probably going to take a bit of a break from this series. I've been reading like Miss Bourne for like nonstop for months and um, I think I kind of need to read something else before I go into the third book, but um, it was very, very good. I gave it four out of five stars on, good on Goodreads. Um, I still really loved it like that's a good store score it just wasn't quite as polished and as sort of it, it just wasn't as strong you know overall I think as the first book which I gave five stars so that's my review it's probably really long I, I haven't checked oh it's like 13 minutes long I apologize if you have like watched all of this thank you um I can't edit my videos so we I just have to make do um Thank you for watching. Bye. Have a good day.